Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I know you're all looking around to see who it is. Amen. 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 Mother said. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I said, Mother Sylvia, you all get excited. I said, Mother Sylvia. Can't we have fun in church? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, you must learn to have fun. I said, Mother Sylvia, everybody got excited. All right, watch this. Watch this. Missionary firm. Amen. Hallelujah. You see? Hallelujah. We must learn to have fun. Amen. No, we don't forget to do Amen. I want to present the speaker on today. Amen. This person I happen to know very well. Came in contact with this person years ago, years, years, years ago. Know him very well.
coming from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And I will read in your hearing, and I would love you to sit down for this entire. So I don't know if you sit down while I read. And it says, And God said, Let us make men in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fall of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And Genesis 2, verse 18 says, And the Lord God said, It is not good for the man shall be alone. I will make him and then help me for him. And my topic would be the anatomy of the human body through the strength of the unity by the power of the mindset. Sure. The anatomy of the human body through the strength of reality by the power of a mindset. Yeah. And so we all very much understand Genesis 1. We understand the creation. We understand the creation of man. We understand that man has been the greatest creation of God. It has been the, the thing that God loved most. And he loved man so much that he created a beautiful world for man to live in. God created it when he created and spoke everything into existence. He was so mindful of man that he created everything so that man could be comfortable living in it. That's what God did. And so God created man. And he gave man dominion over everything. Over the fish of the sea, of everything man had dominion over. He also put man in the garden. And when he put him in there, the scripture said that he put it there to keep it. And one would wonder, if creation is such a miraculous, perfect thing, why would God put man there to keep it? Hmm. And you would ask the question, why is he have to keep the garden if it's something that is created in perfection? Because there was nothing bad about creation. Creation tells us that when God created things, he said he saw it and it was good. And if God saw it and it was good, it is good. So there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing about it to keep. But we understand also that there is the enemy. We understand that Lucifer was falling out of grace with God. Lucifer was thus not from heaven. He lost his place in heaven and so was his followers. And that's why God told man that he had to keep the garden. Man, God told man to keep the garden, meaning that he told him not to allow the enemy to come into your space. You must be watchful want to take things and put God aside and not careful and mindful and then we allow the enemy to come into our place, into our space. And so this is what happened when man failed to do what God told him to do. Now, a woman, when God created 
complicated everything. He found that the man was alone and he wanted to give him a companion. So he created a woman. He put man in a deep sleep. And many years, I, when I read that scripture, I always questioned why God put Adam in a deep sleep. I asked many Bible scholars and many of them that have an answer. They said, well, you know, I would assume that he would want him to be in pain when he's performing the ceremony. And I'm saying, but God is the creator of man. God is the miracle worker. And I know that if God wanted to take that rib out of Adam, he didn't have to put him in a deep sleep. He could take the rib out of Adam and Adam would even know that the rib came out of him. So I was wondering why God put it in a deep sleep. Later on, God gave him the revelation. It was just a typology of Jesus Christ dying for the church. So I into this space. And once the enemy came into his space, now the enemy had the opportunity to do his thing. So he spoke to the woman and he said to the woman, and he paid a man game and he said to her, you know, that God told him not to eat from all the foods in the garden. And she said, no, we can have from all but the one that's in the midst. That's the one we're not supposed to eat. Unless we want to die. Now Satan said, and we know that Satan said to her, you know you're not going to die. God just don't want you to be like him. So the moment she entertained the thought, now she started wonder, why God does not want me to be like him? Now she conceived it in her mind, and now she saw the food, it was the good, it was looking good to eat. So she ate, and not only did she eat, but she ate.
blood that the human body has. They have about six, seven pints of blood. You can lose four or five pints of blood. I get a transfusion. As long as there is life in the body, you will live. You can live. No matter what amount of blood you lose, you can live. And so therefore we understand now why, why there were sacrifices had to make for the atonement the sin because we understand that atonement come only by the shedding of blood. Now we understand and if we trace back every human being on this earth is a descendant of Adam. We don't listen from monkeys, don't let nobody fool you. Monkeys are not human descendants. We all descended from Adam. Adam was the first man created by God placed in the garden. And when he gave him a wife, he said, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish this earth, and so do. We are the descendants of Adam. And if we are the descendants of Adam, that means that we are inheritance of the blood of Adam. The blood of Adam is tainted with sin. So therefore, some kind of pure blood has to be the atonement for our sin. It cannot come from our blood. We cannot cut our vein and try to make a sacrifice unto God for the forgiveness of sin. So you find that God in his marvelous plan through the blood of animals because they are not the descendants of Adam. They have no sin in their blood. But because, so that's why God said, in the atonement of your sin, you shall kill a lamb, a dove, a turtle dove, whatever it is to get your sin, your, your sins redeemed. Only a temporal fit. Why? We are not related to animals, and an animal cannot relate to us. No matter how close we want to be with a pet, or if we love the pet and we want to say he's a part of our family, they cannot relate to a human being. They would not understand why a human being has to sin all the time.
pregnant by the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. So, we have our permanent faith, the atonement for our sin. Yes. It's coming because he has to come in the human flesh. Yes. Got it? Because he has to relate to the human yes. body. So he got
when it was fully come, yes. and they were all up in the room, yes. one of all,
God sent for us. Because we all have the inheritance in sin blood out of Adam. So he sent the sinless one, his son, his only begotten son. Only begotten son. And he sent them. And he fulfilled the purpose of the Father. He and the Father is one. He and the Father is one. He and the Father is one. Yes. Just like every organ in your body that works together as one, they work together as one. The blood, everything work together as one. Body and soul and spirit work together as one. There is also a oneness in Christ. Whosoever believe, whosoever 
Your heart. 